The first three figures in a pattern are shown below. Figure 1 is formed by three identical squares of side length 1 arranged in two rows. The perimeter of figure 1 is 8. Given a figure in the pattern, the next figure is obtained by adding a square of side length 1 on the right hand end of each of the two rows. How many squares of side length 1 are used to form figure 8? Well, let's uh, just continue this pattern and uh, let's just so we'll have figure 4, figure 5, figure 6, 7, and then 8. And it shouldn't be that hard to figure this out. So the number of squares here is 3. Here it's 5. Here it's 7. And as you can see, it's going up by 2 every time. So this will be 9, this will be 11, 13, 15, and 17. So figure 8 will have 17 uh, squares. Determine the perimeter of figure 12. Okay, so let's put perimeter up here. Let's see if there's any kind of pattern uh, with the perimeter. Uh, okay, so I think we'll have to extrapolate this. So figure 9, 10, 11, and we're going up to 12 this time, right? Okay, so let's see. Perimeter. Perimeter of this guy, the first one, is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then similarly, you know, you can count the perimeter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then in a similar way, this was 12. The perimeter of um, the next one would be 14. It's going up by 2 every time. 16. 18, and you guys get the point, 20, 22, and then this one will therefore be 24, uh, 26, 28, and 30. So 30 is the perimeter of figure 12. Determine the positive integer C for which the perimeter of figure C is 38. All right? So I, you know, you just continue this, I guess. So... Uh, if you have the figure number and then the perimeter. So let's see, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's see what happens. So this would be 32, 34, 36, 38. So figure C uh, is figure 16. So C equals 16. And then finally, determine the positive integer d for which the ratio of the perimeter of figure 29 to the perimeter of figure d is 4 to 11. All right? So the ratio of the perimeter of figure 29, well, we can easily figure that out. 17, 18, dot, 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 all the way to 29. And I'll let you do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can. And when you do that extrapolation, you will find that this is 64, the perimeter. And this was the figure number. And they're saying that the ratio of the perimeter of figure 29, which is 64, to the perimeter of figure D, so we'll just call that perimeter D like that, is 4 to 11. Okay, cross multiply and solve this, and you'll get PD is equal to 176. So again, you're just extrapolating this to 176, and when you do the math, this comes out to be 85 because remember the perimeter just goes up by 2 every time so you can easily figure out that that would be figure 85 so D is equal to 85 pretty much that's the integer that they're looking for the symbol n factorial represents the product of the positive integers 1 to n, that is n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot, 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 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. For example, the value of 4 factorial is 24 because 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. Determine the value of 7 factorial over 5 factorial. So this would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and the bottom would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, interestingly, this and this are the same, so they cancel, and then you're just left with 7 times 6, which is 42. So it's a quick way of doing that. 
Determine the positive integer n for which 98 factorial times 9900 is n factorial. 98 factorial. This number is actually just 99 times 100. And that, if you combine this with this and this, that's just 100 factorial. And therefore, if 100 factorial is n factorial, n is equal to 100. Determine the positive integer m for which m plus 2 factorial over m pa factorial is 4, 0, 2, 0. 0. m plus 2 factorial over m factorial is 4, 0, 2, 0, 0. Okay. Well, the top is m plus 2 times m plus 1 times m factorial. Correct? And then the rest will we'll keep for now the same. And then this guy down here is the same as this one, so we can just cancel those. So really what we're left with is m plus 2 times m plus 1 is equal to 4, 0, 2, 0. Now we could expand this into a quadratic equation, but I think it would be a little bit easier if we can just break this up, if we can break it up, into the product of two consecutive integers, which is basically what this is, two consecutive integers. Well, without too much difficulty, if I, what I would do is just see ballpark estimate what is the square root of that and it's approximately 200.5 so you get out a calculator and you can easily figure out that this number is 200 times 201 and there you go you got pretty much the exact form that is represented on the left side so m plus 1 would be this guy and m plus 2 would be this guy so if m plus 1 is 200 m is 199. So that's a quick way of solving that without a quadratic formula. And now we got the last one. Suppose that q is a positive integer and that r is the number for which q plus 2 factorial minus q plus 1 factorial is equal to q factorial times r. Show that for every positive integer q, the number r is an integer which is a perfect square. q plus 2 factorial minus q plus 1 factorial is equal to q factorial times r. Okay. And uh, so I think I'll just expand this. I'm going to try to get everything in terms of this q factorial. So this is q plus 2 times q plus 1 times q factorial. And then minus q plus 1 times q factorial is equal to q factorial times r. So we can get rid of that. We just divide through and that get that gets eliminated. And then let's expand this. We got q squared plus 3q plus 2 minus q minus 1 is equal to r. Okay? And then combining this is q squared plus 2q plus 1 is r. And then this factors very nicely, I believe. Q, Q, 1, and 1. Okay? So Q plus 1 squared is equal to R. And then what are they asking for? Show that for every positive integer Q, the number R is an integer which is a perfect square. Okay, we just showed that. So no matter what you put into there, this is a perfect square. It's in that form. Therefore, R is a perfect square. So you can write that out. Since uh, q is an integer, q plus 1 is an integer, and therefore q plus 1 uh, squared is a perfect square, which, e which equals r, which equals r right there. So I think that's sufficient. We call a positive integer balanced if it has six digits. Each of its six digits is non-zero and the product of the first three digits is equal to the product of the last three digits. For example, 241181 is balanced since no digit equals zero and 2 times 4 times 1 is equal to 1 times 8 times 1. Determine with justification all balanced positive integers of the form 3b8d5f. 
we have six digits and we've got uh, three B eight D five F. So for to meet the definition, three times B times eight would have to equal D times five times F. Okay. Well, this three and this eight that combines to twenty-four. So twenty-four B would have to equal D times five times F. All right. Now twenty-four and five don't mix. Like twenty-four is not a multiple of five. So the only way that this could be valid is if B is equal to five. Yeah, that's the only way. Okay. So if that's the case, this just reduces to 24 is equal to D times F. And I think that would give us uh, some limited options, which is a good thing. So let's see, what, what, what would be the possibilities for D and F? We can have 3 and 8. We can have 4 and 6. 6 and 4. And 8 and 3. And I think that's it. So therefore, the 3B8D5F, that has only four possibilities. It could be 358. Well, they're all 358 since B is 5. But then the D5F part, that is going to be depending on that. So it's going to be either 358, 456, 654, or 853. So... Yeah, these are the ones, so that solves that. And part B. Determine with justification a three-digit positive integer of the form 4BC for which there are exactly three balanced positive integers of the form 4BC DEF. 4BC DEF. For it to match the criteria... 4BC, 4 times B times C, I should say, is equal to D times E times F. So D times E times F, um, hmm, has to, well, there's a few possibilities. It could be 4BC itself, or it could be 4 times C times B. It could be B times 4 times C, B times C times 4. C times 4 times B, or C times B times 4, like that, in that order. Now, let me see here. Determine the justification of three-digit positive integer. A three-digit, so that makes me think that there's lots of combinations here. Yeah, three-digit positive, four, 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 exactly. So I think there's more than one answer or more than one way of doing this. So I just have to find a three-digit positive integer. Because if I go back, you notice how these numbers are different. I'm actually using here the same sort of numbers, but just m shifting them around. So I'm just going down one sort of path of more than one path. And I just want to make that clear, because you might think, well, isn't there other ways of doing this? And the answer is yes. Now, we want exactly three. That's a key uh, issue in this question. We don't want, see, this is six. We don't want six. We want exactly just three. And that could happen if, for example, B is equal to C. If B is equal to C, then this six would actually drop down to three because there would be identicals. Yeah. Yeah, because then this would be the same. And... These two would be the same, and these two would be the same. So it would actually be three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go with that. So let's say B is equal to C, and then let's see what happens. Let's try some numbers. And with a little bit of trial and error, you can get this. So let's, I'll speed this, speed things up a bit and just go directly to what will work. Five will work. So B, if B equals C equals five, then this will work. So you'll have four times 5 times 5 on this side, which is, well, on this side, I should say, uh, which is 100. 
and therefore on this side we just have to find uh, three numbers uh, of this form. This is the first form. This is the oops. Uh, well, these these the, this guy and this guy, and then this guy and this guy, which shouldn't be that hard. So basically, that would be uh, four five five, and then five four four, and then four five four. Hold on, four five five, five five four five. I think I, yeah, I put too many fours there, and then five five four. Yeah, there we go. Those are the only three. Those that's exactly three. So that means my four BC is four five five, and my DEF is four five five, or I can have a four five five with a five four five. Or I could have a four five five with a five five four. So when we have this scenario, we will get exactly three numbers of that form.